All right, and now we're recording. Hello, class. Or rather, hello, student. I feel rather embarrassed. Please excuse me. I was so eager to get into the topic of world peace that I uh, end my method for attaining it my method um, I uh, I neglected to even do an introduction that's some pretty basic first day stuff right there so I think now is a good opportunity as I'm still preparing my lesson plan for the next class uh, the next lecture um, I'll give you a spoiler it's going to be about compassion, conditional compassion, unconditional compassion, might talk about things like empathy, I don't know, but the thing is, is that's all you get to know for now. Um, I'm your instructor, I'm JJ, some people call me JJ Styles. Owner and proprietor of Bright Idea Records, located at brightidearecords.com. Bright music. Anyways, um, I don't think it's any big secret that I'm also J.J. Baker. It's at the end of the credit reel on every video games and more episode that is available, mostly on the Internet Archive, located at archive.org a nonprofit that always needs and appreciates any support that it can get um, oh yeah you probably want to trust me but you're wondering what does JJ stand for okay I'll tell you I don't really like to tell people because Nobody calls me by these names except, like, my doctors and my school instructors. But, um, I'll tell you, uh, JJ stands for Judson Gerald. It's a combination of my father's name and my uncle's name. I'd spell it out for you, but I don't want to insult you. I'm sure you can look it up on your own if you really want to know. I'll give you this much of a clue. I am not a double D, Judd. I am a single D, Judd. Okay? But you can call me JJ. Please call me JJ. That's what everybody calls me. That's what I respond to. And now you might be wondering what qualifies me uh, to instruct anyone on the topic of world peace and I might reply with that is a fantastic question I'm glad you asked it because um, quite frankly you should be skeptical you know why I don't know uh, you don't really know me that well do you you may know about me but you don't really know me I know because my phone doesn't ring that much and it always seems to ring when I'm recording a video, too. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you why I'm qualified. Because I say I am. And I will elaborate on that. You see, world peace is an attainable thing. I don't have faith in much I'm not a religious person I've been baptized Catholic I do Zen Buddhism style meditation and try to practice the Zen Buddhism philosophies such as crap like eating when I'm hungry and sleeping when I'm tired I don't like to conform to a schedule nor do I like to conform to a regimen. It's true. Some of you may know I'm a drug addict. And it's definitely not by choice. 
It's a terrible situation that is just... I would say my karma, but I don't necessarily really believe in that. I don't necessarily believe in reincarnation either, and we will talk about that in the next class with regards to taking your time to understand and other things. But the thing is, is you don't have to be a religious person. That's a personal choice that I will respect. Granted, I may make fun of religious types. I may make fun of religions. I may make fun of anybody I want to. And it may come across as mean. Like I'm a mean girl. You've heard that term before, right? Oh, she's one of those mean girls. Yeah, it's not really something that guys are known for. Because guys are usually just jerks they're usually cruel I am not a cruel person but I can be a mean person and it's because I've led a hard life and uh, I carry that hardness within me because I haven't found a way to let go of it I'm not clinging to it trust me it's more like it's glued to me like uh, with an adhesive so, but, I learned how to be a very open-minded person early on in life. And though I don't really like hypocrites and people that act more righteous than you or me, and uh, I also don't care much for liars. I don't care much for um, people that take advantage of their position in life, you know. But ultimately, I don't judge groups of people. I judge individuals. I judge the fuck out of individuals. I hold them accountable for their actions. I also take into account their backgrounds. I understand and appreciate that most individuals have backgrounds that are so... large. Like if you were to write a biography... Or if they were to write an autobiography, you know, just about anyone would require a lot of pages to their book, okay? So, therefore, I'm usually pretty lenient with my judgments. I try to favor the person I'm judging. I really do. Which is why at the moment I only really hate James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich because <clears throat> they fucked up Napster and I really liked that. It was practically the first time I'd ever had unlimited access to music. And on top of that, my band was getting more popular through Napster and uh, I, I'm, I'm good at holding a grudge. You know, I'm not crazy. I'm not going to, like, hunt them down or anything. I'm not going to destroy their credit. Because they're so rich anyways. What would that even accomplish, right? I do respect goodness in people, like philanthropy. I might forgive uh, those fat cat fucks if they became philanthropists. But whatever, man. Live and let live. I'm not jealous. No, I just don't appreciate what whiny little bitches they are. Because I've had to suck it up a lot in life. Because, I don't know, bitching would have done me no good. 
and would have only drug me down into the depths of sadness that much further. So, you know, those whiny little bitches can keep their money. I'm going to change to another topic now because I don't want you to get scared. Although, I am a person to be feared. Honestly, I carry a gun. Sometimes two, sometimes three. Depends on how scared I am that day. Scared of you. And I also uh, know how to hack computer systems. Let me say this. I've been doing both for a very long time. I've been a licensed concealed carry weapon carrier since 2007. I've never shot anyone. Not even myself. It's taken a lot of responsibility and a lot of deep thinking because to act, uh, I'm, I want to say with haste, but it might mean the opposite of what I think it does. So I'm going to say to act rashly is a bad idea when you're a gun owner. And to act rashly is typically a bad idea with regard to anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just basically giving you general information. And uh, I don't know. I don't expect you to believe me. Just be skeptical. Be very skeptical. And when I eventually save the world from itself... <laughs> you know, it's not even about me. It's more about my method. How did I develop this method? I've had many friends with varied backgrounds of all types walk uh, like like I I got some of the best I've met really cool people repeatedly. And I've actually been able to maintain, uh, you know, relationships, like connections. You know what I mean? You know, like, like people that I break up with of a romantic nature. I, I've remained friends with many of them for, you know, a while. I, I still have some that are really good friends. And, you know, we just, like, we talk things out, you know, and see where the other's coming from instead of just, like, writing them off as a worthless person, you know? I see that a lot with people that date. I don't know, though. I come from a generation called the Millennial Generation. I was almost a Gen Xer, Generation X, but I was like a year too late to that party. So, anyways, I will continue. I've, I've met people. Sometimes it's only been like once or twice. People like the Dalai Lama leaving Doc Dart Fito de la Parra um I'm trying to remember the guy uh, that runs Delphi Records that got Richie Valens famous um Bob Keen uh Chris Mancini the son of Henry Mancini um to name a few those are just some of the more famous ones I've actually known too many people to count. A lot of them through the public access TV studio where I kind of got an opportunity to really grow up and develop my identity and form like a world viewpoint. Um, yes. Very good, very important. But, um, 
we'll talk about that probably around lesson three or four it's gonna have to do with like communities and I'm gonna try to make some references to like hacker spaces and like I don't know conventions techno raves um, just basically parties where everybody's invited maybe like parades okay all this shit's important to get world peace trust me and you know instead of I know world peace probably sounds like science fiction or at least regular fiction to most of you right well it's not but if it helps you you can refer to it as global nonviolence and it's not just about nonviolence like I was saying earlier, the compassion thing kind of is important, but I don't want to go too far into it because, yeah, you're going to come to find that this particular instructor is a very middle, in, I'm a very gray kind of guy because I'm not going to be too hippie and I'm not going to be too fascist, all right, if you know what I mean when I say that. I got no love for the hoes. And until you prove otherwise, you're basically just a hoe to me. I don't get much help. And I could really use help. I've always been pretty broke, pretty poor. I can't remember the last time I filed income taxes. Because I think you got to make 400 bucks annually. And for a long time now, I haven't earned, like, more than $400 in a 12-month time period in a long time. You might think I'm lying. You might be like, how do you survive? You know, I got my methods, kind of like my method towards world peace. That's all you really need to know about that. But the thing is, is it's, it's easy enough to find out. I mean, taxes are public record, aren't they? I don't know. But, um, when you're, when you're as resourceless as I am for the length of time that I've been, you learn to just sort of, focus on your own problems. You don't, I don't really gossip about people. Like, sometimes I like to know what people are up to. But usually it's like their projects, you know? It's not like, you know... And I mean, I suppose if I hear that like somebody had a new addition to their family, like a child, I guess that might be considered gossip, but shucks. Seems like a project to me. I've been in bands, many, many music acts. And, you know, they involve people, just like a family. And you gotta keep them together, just like a family. And that's, uh, kind of the way I see that. Um, I've always had an interest in world peace. Sounds weird? Not really. There was a movie that was made that was also a Saturday morning cartoon when I was growing up. It was called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. You might have heard of it. Anyways, in this movie they saved the world by bringing forth world peace. They did it with their music that they made in a act called Wild Stallions spelt with a Y W Y or maybe it's S T Y. Maybe it's Two wives, I forget. Anyhow, it's a quite the fantastic made-up story, but I always romanticized the notion of saving the world with world peace and doing it through music. I think a lot of you have as well. If you have, you're perfect for this course. And if you're unfamiliar, look it up. Or if you thought it was 
a crappy movie, well, you might struggle with this class. But then again, you might not. Maybe you're just a hard ass. I don't know. But I'll continue. I also got to meet the Dalai Lama when I was a part of a film crew when he came to my hometown, Tucson, Arizona, in the United States of America. He came to a uh, hotel called Ventana Canyon. Pretty sure that was uh, the, the place. And uh, it was back in the 90s, of course, because like I say, I was young. Yes, I was not the Avenger at the time. And uh, when I met the Dalai Lama, I thought he was a really nice guy. That's all. He didn't creep me out. He was just like a friendly, warm, and genuine person. And actually seemed kind of like the perfect person to like be the mouthpiece for world peace. Like, you know... I know, I know, it sounds unbelievable, I know. That's why I've put so much thought into it. I've, I've really thought, like, how is this ever going to happen? People are such haters. But, it just so happens I've led a very tumultuous life. And, uh, also, I say some pretty crazy things. I've actually been beat up. Many times. Like, probably like a half a dozen for just things that I was talking about or like for flapping my lips too much. So, yeah, I wasn't even like being physical. And I, I've been beaten up many times. Just for stupid shit I said. Which I think is ridiculous. Especially when you live in a nation that is a democracy. And the whole point of a democracy is that you can talk out your issues. So. I've got to. I've had an opportunity to think about those things. While I was healing up from my beatdowns. From mostly strangers. If you can believe that. But yes, I know. Sometimes your instructor, if you know me or know anything about me, sometimes I, I'm known for being controversial because I say some crazy stuff and people don't expect that from a child star. Well... If you have any assumptions about me, I would recommend that you set them aside. I think that uh, assumptions make asses out of you and me, but also I believe that assumptions are a prerequisite to being a hypocrite. We'll probably talk about that around lesson five. I think um, Dalai Lama, Wild Stallions. Um. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk more about my understanding of systems. You see, I have a, a community college degree from Pima Community College in my hometown, which I already mentioned, uh, Tucson, the Dirty T. Anyways. <laughs> And yes, I have a computer programmer degree slash systems analysis. It's not a combo degree. It's just like two very important areas of computer science that basically if you're going to be a good systems analyst, it helps if you're a programmer. And if you're going to be a programmer, it really helps if you if you're also an analyst. It makes for a better, well-rounded geek. Some people would say employ. Good for those people. Good for them. I'll bet they got a big, fat bank account. 
anyhow. I'm not jealous. I'm just eager to tear down all the preconceptions and notions that people have of what are virtues, good traits, strength, what are weaknesses, what are bad traits. Because there's a bunch of people whose heads are up their asses. Totally. And all they see is darkness. And I'll bet a lot of them would openly admit that their life is a void. And that if they only would have known before they went walking down their path of ignorance and selfishness. Alright? I'm probably going to end this soon because I'm starting to get a little worked up. But I'm just trying to help you get to know me a little better. And like, <laughs> don't trust me. Be skeptical. But please keep your mind and your ears open. Okay, that's the least you can offer me. I'm only trying to save the goddamn planet. You know, when I was a child, I remember when the Columbine shooting happened. And guess what? Well, we'd already had a mass shooting, actually, at a post office. That's where the term going postal came from. I was quite aware at the time. And I had also been bullied a lot at this point when Columbine happened. And, you know... When, when a person gets pushed around, they get some dark, dark thoughts. And, you know, they have to work through that. You know what really helps the dark thoughts, I find, is empathy. If you, if you think you want to hurt someone else the way you've been hurt, well, think do you want to be hurt like that again? And if your answer is no, well then why would you ever want to hurt anyone else like that? That's a nice logical approach to dark feelings and dark thoughts from abuse at the hands of people that were able to do it to you. Okay? And I guess I'm going to sign off and I'll upload this and I look forward to our next session together. Take care.